Hey y'all, welcome to Marcy in the Middle. Today's episode is about autism, and my friends Brina Dutton and Dee Dee Gallegos are here to share their own stories about raising children with autism. We hope you enjoy this episode. Well, welcome to the podcast, Brina and Dee Dee. Hello. Thank y'all for coming. So today we are going to talk about autism. April is Autism Month, and so we have waited to kind of share these stories until this month just to kind of put some awareness out there, and um, there are a lot of people who actually deal with autistic children or even who are autistic, and I feel like in our area there's not a lot of good information, and sometimes we get information from the internet and TV, which Mm -hmm. is not accurate so we'll just go ahead and get that out there so um in prepping for this interview I just was doing a little research Mm -hmm. and noticed that um it appears that one in 100 people globally um are diagnosed with autism and one in 44 in the United States Mm -hmm. so that is a pretty significant number um and I know it's grown the testing and the diagnosis Mm -hmm. of that has become Mm -hmm. a little more refined so maybe um people are it's getting noticed earlier but also environmental factors and other things might actually be making it um more common Mm -hmm. um so we're just going to actually jump right in because i think your stories are um amazing you guys are strong amazing women and moms and i have great admiration for you and i really appreciate you sharing because i sometimes it's tough to talk about but i know you guys like to help other people and so i appreciate it okay well i'm gonna just send it right to you, Brina, and let okay. you just kind of tell a little bit about your own story. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a son, Owen, who's seven now, um, and he was diagnosed whenever he was three. We uh, had a year to two years prior to that, like, where we noticed some symptoms mm-hmm. um, that he, so when he was a baby, for example, an infant, meaning, you know, 12 months or younger, he developed normally. He he walked at 11 months. Um, he crawled at five months. He he said a handful of words when he was one, you know, including mama, dada, bubba, you know, papa, nana, and um, certain foods that he liked and ate just about anything you can imagine. And um, then at about 12 to 18 months, we noticed that he started digressing in those areas. He started to um, lose some words. He was saying... The words that he was saying, he was communicating those less often, and he was losing eye contact, and um, he would have these little mini, like, meltdowns, I guess what you would call them from a parent perspective, but he was having meltdowns where he was inconsolable, and um, eventually between 18 and 24 months became very aggressive toward um, not only other people, but himself, so he would self-harm. Um, or what they refer to today as SIBs. He, it's a self-injurious behavior. So he would do something to hurt himself. And it was um, at the time, you know, because we're, we're, we're taught that, you know, a child's misbehaving. Well, they, you know, they need redirected or they need a spanking or what, you know, whatever oh. your method of, of parenting is. Um, but we knew that it was more than that. It was something different. It was um, it, it was it was something that he did not have control of. Um, and when I say that, we didn't understand what we do now. And I know four years from now, I won't. Under, you know, there will be so much yeah. more that I have learned then. But now, at this time, looking back, I see that he was overstimulated. So. He has, uh, you know, when most children on the spectrum and I spectrum and I say this because there are no two children on the spectrum who are alike. Right. Um, they're all very different. They'll have, you know, you will have some similarities, um, but no two children are going to be exactly the same. But for Owen, he had a lot of um, sensory issues. So certain sounds and lights and smells and anything from your five senses, if there were certain things that would um, overstimulate him and so then his body would have a physical response to that usually of the you know injuring himself or me or his dad or his brother or whoever was closest to him Um, and not only that but he wasn't able to communicate so that was very frustrating for him too to not be able to to get 
you know, simple things that he needed because he wasn't able to say, this is what I need. So, um, so that was a part of his like diagnosis process. We had mentioned it to his pediatrician a few times and, um, and they said, well, you know, he was so young when we first noticed it, but we wanted to be on top of it. Um, and, and I don't think it, at any point we were ever like, oh, I don't want him to be, di-. you know, of course yeah. you don't want your child to struggle. We just wanted answers so we could figure out what, okay, what do we do now? So we did go ahead and get him tested pretty early. Um, and from my perspective and talking with other parents and the research that I've done, it is definitely best to get them diagnosed as soon as possible um, because as soon as you get that diagnosis that opens up so many doors for you to get the therapy that they need um, medications if you choose that route um, but just you know you have to have that diagnosis before you can really do anything else so um, the diagnosis is to me the the first most important and initial piece of the puzzle that's got to yeah, be for sure yeah so um so we got oh Owen into um, a developmental pediatrician, and I believe the closest developmental pediatrician for us was in Grapevine, Texas, and we live in Sherman. Um, Now, that said, I don't know who's, you know, there may be someone new to the area. I don't want to overlook that, and if there is, I'd like to know so I can refer Mm -hmm, people to to them, but um, but yeah, we had to go to Grapevine for three different trips um, for him to be seen and evaluated by so there's a few different things that they look into. Um, I think they look at how their fine motor skills are as well. So they're with an occupational therapist, um, a speech therapist, and then the pediatric, uh, uh, the developmental pediatrician that, you know, he spends time with the child as well to help diagnose him. And he, of course, got the diagnosis. Um and so then at that point, I think we were just kind of, even though we knew something was up, mm-hmm. we were just kind of like in shock for a couple months because yeah. I remember getting the diagnosis like back in November and not starting therapy, even though we had the prescription for it, not starting his therapy until like February or March of the next year. Cause it was just like this, okay, so he has it, you know, but he's young and a lot of the things that they do are still considered cute and, you know, oh, he's sure. just a baby, you know, mm-hmm. oh, he's just, you know, and so, but what I would say in retrospect, looking back at that, I would say, as soon as you get the diagnosis, do something with it. Don't wait four or five months. Um, when they're in those toddler years, their brains are developing so much and they absorb so much information at that time. And that's just such an integral time for them to um, start therapy. And obviously I am a th- an ABA yes. therapy uh proponent so um I mean I wish we had started therapy a little bit earlier but you know he's still benefited has sure. benefited from it so much so he did start ABA therapy um at the age of three almost four and and would go 40 hours a week okay explain mm-hmm. what ABA, ABA therapy, therapy is. yeah okay so ABA therapy is applied behavioral analysis in the form of a therapy so this is the way I, I try to describe it to family members or just people who don't know what it is whenever I have told them that Owen goes to 40 hours of ABA therapy every <laughs> week. Right. It's like a full-time job it for him. It is a full-time job. It's like this little three-year-old, and he was sent to work mm-hmm. because that's he works so hard. Yes. And essentially what he is doing is going to therapy um, and learning how to um, – communicate and behave in in ways that are socially acceptable um for example instead of when he doesn't first of all learning how to display what he needs and since he's nonverbal, doing that in other ways mm-hmm. uh, whether that be by a pex board which is a series of pictures that yes. he chooses from to show you what he wants or some sign language um you know, learning how to communicate and then also learning not to, in Owen's case, hurt himself yeah. for, as a way to uh, get what he needed or or get his point across, mm-hmm. basically. So essentially he goes to therapy all day to learn how to 
behave and and they constantly redirect him in ways that are um positively it's positive reinforcement it's not a negative thing in any way but it just helps him learn how to behave Mm -hmm. and and request things and interact with other kids with peers with his parents Mm -hmm. with his siblings so that's great yeah okay so Dee Dee you also have a son yes tell us about him and kind of your story because you you kind of arrived on this scene uh, maybe five years before Brina so it Mm -hmm. was a little different it was a little Uh, different so I my son's 15 his name is Tad and he's he's my life and um so when he was younger, he was chronically ill. He had he was had twenty two ear infections before he was two, and had virus after virus. So he was he was constantly sick and on antibiotics. And um, so he we first started noticing he wasn't uh, walk, able to walk. He didn't walk till he was two. So we had we got him immediately into physical therapy and uh, started working with him and. He started walking. Well, then that physical therapist said, hey, you might, you know, you might have get him uh, to pediatrician and talk about autism. And at at that time, autism, I hate to say this, but it was a very, you didn't want that. Right. Right. There was a stigma. There was a stigma. So I got offended. I got Mm -hmm. upset. I remember calling my mom saying, they said he's autistic. What's wrong with, you know, what's wrong with my child? And, um. And so it was a very negative type um, feedback for a parent at the time. And because really nobody knew much about sure. it mm-hmm. other than um, they're different, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did talk to his pediatrician and um, he was like, well, hey, let's just get him diagnosed. You know, well, the and at that time there was a and there still maybe there was a developmental pediatrician in Tallahassee at the Choctaw um, okay, that's Nation good to Hospital. Know. So we took him down there, and it was like a two-hour type visit. I didn't get to go in and attend, but um, we got the feedback from him, and he said, I don't see um, any traits of autism. Um, I do see some sensory and some maybe global or developmental delays. Um, And so we kind of just went off that, and um, he suggested, of course, like speech therapy, occupational, continued physical therapy. So um, we continued to implement that in his daily routine. Um, they would actually come to daycare. We, he went to Victory Life Daycare, yes. and they would come in and, and you know, provide him services there. And so that was really good and helpful for me because we could continue to work and not have to leave or sure. anything. Um, so we really, at the beginning stages we didn't have an autism diagnosis and um we still haven't taken him back for an autism diagnosis just throughout his life we we know he is and his doctors and pediatrician know he is um so uh I wish that earlier stages I could have got that diagnosis at that time though I don't know that it would have helped because there was just nothing available Mm -hmm. for for us and actually, our insurance just kept denying any kind of autism diagnosis on any coding. So that was pretty stressful because I'd have to fight for Everything. for you know services and to pay bills and and things like that. So where I'm kind of different I, now, I see oh my gosh, look at all of these resources. It's amazing. Get your child in. Get them diagnosed. Get them the resources that they need. Like Brina said, early in life because. It will tr- it will change your life. It, you know you won't have to wait five or six years like I did. You can go now, and um, get them the help and services that they need. But um, Tad, I am a firm believer in ABA therapy as well. We have that's how he learns. That's how we implement that in his homeschooling, um, in daily life routines, and and of course at the time, um, he was six years old when I found an ABA therapist. Um, out of Sherman, there was a th- uh, ABA therapy, and um, they were in Sherman in a little bitty, uh, I guess it was like a mall, craft mall. She had a little office in there, and they really didn't serve the Oklahoma area, right. but um, we could pay out of pocket, and she would come into the home, and so that's kind of how we established a, 
ABA therapist, and her name was Ann, and I will never forget her. She was a godsend to us and um, really helped Tad develop. We have saw, saw so much improvement. Um, and like Brina said, no child on the spectrum are the same. Tad never showed any aggression. He never, um, he's very laid back, patient, you know, um, he um, just, he's nonverbal and is he ha, he struggles with communication. But um, through uh, the LAMP system, which is a, an app on his iPad, he can communicate with us and tell us what hurts, what does he need, is he hungry, um, and also he answers his uh, school questions through the LAMP system and multiple choice uh questions um other than that uh we kind of have the same you know journey just a little bit I was a little bit ahead of Rena yeah. and um but we do share a good bond with our kids being on the same spectrum so. yeah okay one thing I want to because we've we've mentioned it a couple of times you and you hear this term often but on the spectrum explain to um to us that don't have a, a, yeah. a deep knowledge on mm-hmm. autism what what is the spectrum and what so, what does that mean? <laughs> so obviously I'm not a doctor or scientist or anything like that, but what how I've understood, explained to me, it's just almost pictured like a linear spectrum, mm-hmm. okay? And so, and I've even heard uh, specialists say, you know, everyone is somewhere mm-hmm. on the spectrum. For sure, yeah. And also the way they diagnose autism has also changed and mm-hmm. sort of like developed uh, over the years because they're still learning so much more about it you know they they're mm-hmm. learning so much about it um so and, and correct me if i'm wrong and I, ho- I don't know if you know this or not the answer to this but like there used to be levels level one yes. two three and there still may be but i have heard recently that they're doing away with that mm-hmm. because it's more of just like because you may have a child who's you know um a level three on this subject, but mm-hmm. level one mm-hmm. on, so really you can't really mm-hmm. put them, you know, on a level, but it's just like they're on the spectrum. So it's just, it's hard to explain, well, honestly. For, for example, like my son has probably 27 different diagnoses. Sensory process, I'm not going to name all of them, but for example, sensory processing disorder. That's for another podcast. Aprax- <laughs> <That's right. laughs> apraxia, um, dyspraxia global de- and developmental delay, that all those are on that spectrum. Right. They all so play a part. They all mm-hmm. play a part in that spectrum. So that when someone says they're on the spectrum, um, like my son has more sensory, mm-hmm. um, maybe more than, than Owen. I don't, so what I mean is right. like they're all, all different, different levels. So um, I hope that kind of explains yeah, the spectrum I think, to us. Yeah, point. I think so too. And there's different levels mm-hmm. of severity in yes, each, um, yes. whether it's communication mm-hmm. or sensory yes. development. Mm-hmm. And I think um, a lot of times you hear that, the term autistic, and you start immediately mm-hmm. making assumptions mm-hmm. of yes. the limitations yes. sure. and yeah. what it's going to look yeah, like. There's some that are high functioning yeah. that you can be in a room and never know that they have it. So, right. And some of and the most intelligent hidden. people, you know, they say Elon Musk is on the mm-hmm. autism spectrum. You know, the, the, these inventors mm-hmm. and these super intelligent, I've heard Albert Einstein, mm-hmm. yes. all these people who did great things um, in technology or art or whatever were on the autism mm-hmm. spectrum so you have some children who may be really struggle in school mm-hmm. um, who who don't do well in the classroom setting but they're brilliant mm-hmm. you right. know um, and you you find that a lot in children who are on the autism spectrum mm-hmm. yeah that is you just want people to know yeah there are um, it's not a sign of intelligence sure. and now even you know we, we consider the different types of yeah. intelligences even in a, a normal, oh yeah quote, normal yeah. Mm-hmm. child. Mm-hmm. Like, you can, every child is not going to be measured the same. Right. Um, and that's not like a, a cop-out to, to not say sure. any child doesn't have a particular difficulty. Mm-hmm. But just to kind of broaden your mind and think, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. because you've just referenced that Tad does homeschool. Mm-hmm. So he's nonverbal, which mm-hmm. means he does not speak. Mm-hmm. But... He still communicates mm-hmm. sure, and using he still his can tools. do fractions and division and multiplication. He can read. Amazing. And Amazing. you would look, mm-hmm. you would probably, because he couldn't talk, think that he could even do those things. But my mom was like, 
he's brilliant. He can do those things. And yeah. I appreciate that because she can see him on a different mm-hmm. level than mm-hmm. a mom can, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that I see that every day, he shows me what he does on the board. And that's just really exciting no that is exciting um and your mom uh mm-hmm. we spoke at lunch and you, your mom is a retired teacher My mom's a retired teacher. so she is now back yep. back on duty <laughs> she's back on duty and i feel like she loves every minute of it so um, and my dad, he'll he'll joke around and be like, well, I'm the bus driver, the cook. And, you know, he does right. things, too. So <laughs> yeah. I have to add, give to be him left a little out. shout out, too. Yeah. That's right. Which brings up a good point. I know a lot of times I've got a couple of friends who have kids um, with just different disabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, the support system mm-hmm. is crucial. Yes. crucial. And that, honestly, is a universal. Well, As humans, we need support. Absolutely. But I think in, in the situation where if your child has got an issue that Mm -hmm. takes them whether they have to be homeschooled Mm -hmm. or just a lot of adaptations yeah where they say it takes a village it really does take a village to yeah to raise a special needs child and I think both Didi and I are very uh, fortunate to have uh, blessed I should say to have parents and on both sides of our family you know our husband's parents and our parents who are very involved in in our kids lives and I and I have contact with so many uh single parents single moms who have reached out to me that th- it's just them mm-hmm. and you know that's another goal of kind of what we want to accomplish is like to help develop some sort of respite mm-hmm. care mm-hmm. so that those those parents can have a break absolutely can have you they know need some a break. time to take care of themselves yeah. mm-hmm. um just kind of moving off of that point, you guys are obviously extremely gracious to share your stories with us, but I know you in your regular day-to-day lives, you basically will say minister <laughs> because it is one million percent a ministry and try to help other families who are dealing with this mm-hmm. so much so that you've developed and uh, founded the Owen Foundation, yes. Yes. Um, which is a, I mean, it's a fantastic resource in in communities like North Texas and mm-hmm. southeastern Oklahoma, where we're kind of more rural. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me about the Owen Foundation okay. and kind of what you guys offer. Yeah, so, and I I fail to mention this sometimes when I'm talking about it. Like, really, when I say, when I had the idea uh, to start the Owen Foundation, it was not my idea. It was God's idea. Amen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I was like, are you sure? <laughs> uh, but... So when Owen was diagnosed and we started taking him to therapy um, every day, yeah. that we didn't have therapy in Sherman. We didn't have a therapy option for ABA in Sherman at the time. Uh, so this was four years ago. Um, so we drove him to McKinney Frisco area, and we had we loved the therapy center that we had down down there. But thank God we don't have to drive to McKinney yes. anymore. We do have ABA therapy in Sherman now. Um, but to be able to do that, I had I had had a children's boutique for 10 years to be able to take Owen to therapy. We closed the store, but that was also like right before 2020. So that mm-hmm. ended up being a blessing really at mm-hmm. the time. But um, my full time job became transporting yes. Owen mm-hmm. to therapy. That was that was what I was going to be doing, you know, and and I had no problem doing that. It was just kind of that. Look, we got the diagnosis. What are we doing now? But, you know, after about six months of driving him down there, and I got into a routine where I wish I was still in this routine, but I got into a routine <laughs> where I'd work, go work out, I'd go, go wash my car, I'd <laughs> go to do get any groceries that, you know, all mm-hmm. the normal things that I would do in it Sherman. has to be done. Yeah, it has to be done, dry cleaning and all that. And I found places in McKinney, Frisco, to do all those things. And But, you know, I've always been... Um, entrepreneurial I've always had an entrepreneurial yeah. spirit and I've always um I've always wanted to you know uh, do something where I'm in contact with people mm-hmm. I just love being around people and love to talk I love to gab so I, I you know I would pray like this is my purpose right now this is the season that I'm in right now but what what you know I feel like there's something more mm-hmm. that I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be doing and I I would have other I share information about struggles that I go through to to a degree I share some of that information on my personal social media and I would have other moms reach out to me and say hey I saw that your son's autistic and I just noticed that I got so much gratification and so much fulfillment out of 
talking with those other moms mm-hmm. and, and saying, hey, this is where, where I am, even though I didn't have it all figured out, you know, but at least sharing in that, uh, in that, you know, whether it be, be pain that they were feeling, because it mm-hmm. is, you grieve, you grieve yeah, you go through when you get that diagnosis, you grieve that neurotypical, that normal child. Mm-hmm. And that's just me being honest and real. You, you grieve that mm-hmm. normal mm-hmm. child that you thought you were going to have. And then as time goes on, you realize how amazing your mm-hmm. child is just the way they are. And, and, you know, obviously you want to do the best to help them navigate through it. Um, but it really makes you see things differently. We can, yeah. that's a whole other podcast <laughs> show right there. But anyway, so I, as I'm praying for God to give me direction, okay, what do I do with my life beyond this, you know, beyond just being transport, you know, the mom bus driver, mm-hmm. um, for my son, um, you know, what can I do at the same time simultaneously or when Owen starts kindergarten, you know, that's coming up like, what can I do? And, um, I initially had, um, started an LLC, a company called Bloom Consulting Services, which I still have to this day. And that is because I do want to go into larger corporations, for example, like Choctaw Nation. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they have, uh, some offerings for children on the spectrum, but I have a backpack full of ideas amazing (laughs) things that they could do for their tribal community Mm -hmm. and so I did start that um company to consult with um with larger corporations or uh government entities whoever needed whoever was needing service and helping uh helping grow their offerings for families with children on the autism spectrum and I loved I loved that and I felt like that was that was something that needed to be put in place for future projects but there was still that personal that one-on-one um aspect that was sort Mm -hmm. of missing and I swear I was just driving down the road (laughs) I was at a stoplight on Custer Street in McKinney just right down the street from Owens um therapy center and it was just like you need a nonprofit organization And you need to offer inclusive, it needs to be all about inclusive, inclusivity (laughs) and inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. It needs to be, (laughs) let's include these kids in things that they don't get included on. Um, That's why we do the basketball camp and some other things we've got coming up. And then also, um, like people just need to be aware. The general public needs to be aware. Uh, I have a passion for um, the uh, EMT services and firefighters and police departments. Um, city management to to all be aware on how to approach a child who's Mm -hmm. missing who's on the autism spectrum water safety there Mm -hmm. are just so many things and I want it to all be in this one little nucleus Mm -hmm. and it's going to be called the Owen Foundation like I never even like I never I never (laughs) even had to think about what it was going to be called and and it was just like the Owen Foundation that's and it was just it was always that and 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 I have big goals too for down the road when he's you know for like um plant future planning Mm -hmm. and things like that too that that we could discuss later but um but it was just like god laid that on my heart that that was what my purpose was Mm -hmm. in this season and i say that in this season because i feel like we're just constantly developing and learning Mm -hmm. and if you're not then we don't want to have lunch know. with you. We don't want to have lunch <laughs> you with you. You can't sit with us. No, I'm just but, That's no, right. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'm constantly working on myself. And, and and then even, like, as autistic, autism parents, you know, like Dee Dee and I were talking about earlier, we're constantly working on our marriages. And for mm-hmm. me, with my w- sibling relationships with my older son. And, and so we're just constantly evolving. We should mm-hmm. always constantly be yeah. evolving. So I asked God, you know, show me what I should do in this season. And, and, and. I feel like this is, it just, it just brings me so much joy and happiness. It doesn't feel like work. Um, Mm -hmm. constantly doing something to, to progress the foundation. And, and and again, when I, when I put that one step forward and work on any aspect of the foundation, it's like God just opens doors. And so I know that this is definitely needed and what I'm supposed to be doing, um, so yeah, I mean, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. No, that <laughs> that is it does it answers it. And the Owen Foundation, yes, it, what you, is it? You, yes. well, you just 
list where they can go to find it and yes. then okay. maybe some of the yeah. resources yeah. they'll find and some of the activities because I know mm-hmm. we've talked yes. about the basketball camp and I think that is I love it yeah so well since you just said that I'll say the basketball camp this year is going to be July 13th and 14th um, it's on a Thursday and Friday and it's going to be held at Durant High School gym this year last year was our first year to have it. We had it at Southeastern Oklahoma State University Arena, and it was off the chain. Can I <laughs> say that? Yes, you can. Um, <laughs> I won't ever say it again, I promise. <laughs> but it was amazing. And um, we had over 60 kids join, and it was ages four and up. We had over 60 kids because it's not just open to children on the spectrum, but children with any sort of special needs or mm-hmm. extra abilities, we should say. Mm-hmm. Um and we had just as many volunteers. That's great. So it was amazing to stand. I don't know if you've been to the new arena. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's amazing and it's beautiful. And we were so grateful that they let us have it there. Um, but to that first day to stand at the top of mm-hmm. the, at the, the arena and look down and see all those yellow and white shirts, you know, because all the kids had on the Owen yes. Foundation yellow shirts and the adults had on the white ones. And it was just like this was a dream yes. you know this was just nothing but an idea and now it's it's here and it was yes we had to put forth work and effort into it but truly God made that happen mm-hmm. and um just you know to have those parents come up to you some of them in tears like I'm they're just ecstatic that their children got to be a part of something so normal mm-hmm. and so you know routine and mundane for mm-hmm. other children yeah. but their child got to be involved in it and it was just it was amazing to it was just such it was a blessing to me Mm -hmm. and something else that I noticed too is that we had so many kids who volunteered from the high schools Mm -hmm. local high schools to come volunteer Mm -hmm. and I don't think that those kids or their parents or me I was not expecting to see it benefit those volunteer kids so much like it really did and so that was, it was just an amazing, it was an amazing event all the way around. Mm-hmm. So yeah. basketball camp, yes, because I, I tend to digress if you have Oh, you're good. But, but this July. This July. And they sign up at the website. And they can go to the OwenFoundation.org okay. and go to upcoming events and they'll see our basketball camp there. They can click there. It does take a little while to, to, to register your child because they are special needs sure. we need as much information as possible about them um but you know probably take about 10 minutes to mm-hmm. register your child it takes about 30 seconds to register yourself as a volunteer so you can also do <laughs> that up. on our website yeah uh, the owenfoundation.org so you can sign up as a volunteer or register your child for the basketball camp okay. on our website Tell me what else is on your website because I know the resources yeah. are <laughs> so we're, tricky we're, to find. We're working on updating our resources, but people should know that they can always go to our website or our social media and message us or email us, um, and it's going to be me who answers. <laughs> um, I'm going to add Dee Dee so she can help <laughs> me with I those do see answers. Them too. Okay, I did add yeah, you, didn't I? Do I? See yes, them I did. Too. As an admin. So one of us will get back to yes, you right. pretty but quickly. We get back pretty quickly, um, but... They can go to our website. We are working on updating our resources page at the moment. Um, And what that's going to have on it, though, Marcy, is going to be like anything that we can think of between the two of us Mm -hmm. and anything that any other moms have needed, um, we want it to be on that resource Mm -hmm. page. Um, Grant opportunities, um, pediatricians, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, anything all the that you way can to think, holistic care, holistic. Uh, I mean, anything um, that you can think yeah. of, whether it's something that I personally use or not, you mm-hmm. know, a B a therapy centers or mm-hmm. speech therapy, OT, PT options in Sherman and, and Denison and Durant and those areas. Um, we work really closely with uh, almost all of those places in Sherman and Durant mm-hmm. and Denison. Um, so we want to have all those resources listed so that people have it. It's like a it's like a one place that they it's can go. They can it's go a little to. hub. Yes, exactly. That they can go to and they can say, okay, look, well, the Owen Foundation has all ABA therapy centers in the Texoma area listed on their website. You just you start know, calling them. Just yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so um, you know, I meet with parents a lot too. Right. We have an office in Sherman um, at the One Grand Center. People can call me, message me, and we'll set up a meeting if you want to meet face-to-face. I do. We do a lot of 
you know, messaging on sure. uh, social media uh, with a lot of parents. But, yeah, I've met with lots of parents who just are, they're down, mm-hmm. you know. They're they're lost. They don't know what to do. And and our, our the idea behind meeting with these parents is that uh, not only to give them direction, but just to give them hope, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Life is not over. No. And there are, and, and it's hard. It's a new journey that's just it's, beginning. And mm-hmm. it's different. It's different than what you expected, mm-hmm. but it's not any less. Right. Right? And we never want our kids to feel like they're less. And so that's that comes from us, too. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, we can't expect our kids to not feel less, but us feel like they're less sure. you know mm-hmm. they're not they're it's just really they they have owen has taught me how to look at the world in a completely different mm-hmm. way mm-hmm. and i will forever be grateful for that because i wouldn't you know i, I would I, I i see myself before as you know i thought i was growing but i was closed-minded in mm-hmm. in some things that i didn't realize i was you know so i really want our, you know, our goal is to help people see the positive in this and try to help bring them some type of normalcy mm-hmm. and, um, but also let them be themselves, the parents yes. be themselves and express themselves because yeah. we've been there. We've cried. We've mm-hmm. absolutely, grieved. we still, I still grieve. I mean, I believe you grieve throughout their life, yes. little things, mm-hmm. you know, Tad's, sure. Tad's about to be 16 and you know, we might not be buying him a car, but we might be buying him a side by side. You know, right. it, it's different, um, and so we're there to support yes. and hug and love on those mm-hmm. parents too. Because mm-hmm. I mean, I wish I would have had that. I did. Yes. I have a great family and support system, but it's different sure. with other families that mm-hmm. you know because you know they've gone through they've it gone firsthand. Through it, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. with their and own I children. see. I, I I've talked to a lot of parents, and they. Like, for example, there's this lady that has a two-year-old that's just recently diagnosed and a 10-year-old that is diagnosed with autism. And she was like, oh, I don't want to come to your house. And I'm like, girl, I have been through it all. There is nothing (laughs) going to face me. You can't scare me. I'm the safest place you can come and not be judged. And and I want people to, I want my house to be open. I want Mm -hmm. my heart to be open to those people. Yeah. Because I've been there and I'm still there. Well, I think and we've talked about this almost in every episode, you're going to have something yeah. in your mm-hmm. life. If you're sure. human and you're alive long enough, mm-hmm. you're going to have some kind of difficulty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and different, not everyone's going to face the same or sure. even maybe as much yeah. of one, but just knowing that you're not by yourself yeah. mm-hmm. is everything. Is everything. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, um, I mean, we watch Jesus mm-hmm. as he yeah. did life. And, I think sometimes we we might get that he was God more than we get that he was human mm-hmm. and that he lived an experience, yeah. although that's a really different than point. ours, mm-hmm. but no, he had skin and mm-hmm. he had friends mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. had feelings and, mm-hmm. and, and he pain hurt. and um, knew, I feel like, what it was like to be alone. And you see him with his mm-hmm. friends um, even t- on the night that he um, was arrested. Mm-hmm. He had his people with him, yeah. mm-hmm. and I feel like that is an untapped mm. resource. Sure. And honestly, a lot of people don't have that, mm-hmm. and I love that you guys are doing this because mm-hmm. it, I can't imagine. I mean, we take so many things for granted, mm-hmm. and we, we've almost just scraped the surface because there are so yeah. many things that you would say neurotypical, yep. we would say normal, mm-hmm. um, sleep patterns, being mm-hmm. able to go eat out, being mm-hmm. able to attend functions together as a family yep. and not somebody have to yep. stay home. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're welcome to address that. But I just think there are so many things you don't think through mm-hmm. and because mm-hmm. you've never had to do that. Right. And when you have, mm-hmm. man, it makes you very yeah. grateful for any mm-hmm. anything it really does. That you get. And I will, since you brought that up. No, I want <laughs> because, you to. Because I think a lot of people will hear this podcast and they will, and maybe they're, a lot of people are going to hear it who do have children on the spectrum. Sure. But you're going to have a, a large audience of people who listen to this who do not have children on the spectrum. But they're, but they're sympathetic to mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. And it's not that we want people to feel sorry for us. No. But, but an those understanding. people want, those people want us to know that they, um, care about what we're going through so if I could if I could give any advice Mm -hmm. just if if you don't experience autism firsthand just try to have understanding for 
people when you know that they do. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and understanding for everything because our lives are very different. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like I said, not to say that they're worse, but they are just very different. Mm-hmm. Um, last minute cancellations. Yep. I'm the queen of that. Yeah. Um, and it's usually because something's happening with sure. Owen, you know, and he's my priority. Mm-hmm. So whatever whatever Owen is going through is going to be the most important thing to Mm -hmm. me so that might mean me showing up late or not at all or you know uh going out to dinner we can't just say hey Thursday is going to be family dinner night you know every week and we're going to go out to eat at a local cafe or a local restaurant on Thursdays we can't do that Mm mm-mm we don't know if that Thursday Owen's going to be in the mood to do that, mm-hmm. you know, and he may be in the mood when we leave the house, but once we get there, Might we have different. to turn around and go home. Mm-hmm. So there are, and it's not that he's not in the mood for it, but you know what I mean? Like sure. he, he's either having some sensory issues mm-hmm. or we're just not able to sit there right. um, that long. So there's a lot that we go through that we don't talk about. We don't mm-hmm. post on social media because... We don't want to complain all the time, you know, but our lives are just very different. Our schedules look different. Um, A lot of parents come to me and their children are not sleeping through the night. They're actually up more than they are sleeping. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like. And then those parents are having to go to work. work. So those, those managers and bosses just be, give them grace Mm -hmm. because they don't understand they've been up all night. It's stressful. Mm -hmm. Then they're coming to work and trying to meet demands. I'm not saying you let, know, them don't, do whatever, let them do whatever, but, yeah. but just keep that open mind and give them some grace. Yep. Give them that. Yeah. Um, but uh, like you said, for the church, um, like we can't go to church. My husband and I, um, you know, he stays home and I go. But uh, I wanted to kind of put that out yeah. there. But First Baptist Church, we I'm going to be a part of starting a ministry there. A lot of my ministry, and it's First Baptist Church in Durant. Mm -hmm. At the 11 o'clock service, we'll have a special needs class so parents can bring their children. And, um, you know, we'll have a buzzer that they can take. So if we need them to, you know, get back, it's right by the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Um, But we that's very important because, uh, you know, church family is so Mm -hmm. important to us. And that support system, it's a whole other support Mm -hmm. system you can add to your your life. So, yeah. Anyway, I think that's going to be fantastic. I'm so excited about that. Yes, me and too. Hopefully, other churches can get on board. See your pattern. I would and, love to um, come yeah. in and help. I mean, it's really not that. It's just mainly volunteers. We sure. need the volunteers in the church because it's not just like one person's going to be in there. It needs one on one, right? For each child, yeah. and I want 20 kids in there. That's and right. 20. <laughs> no. So. That's right. So if y'all are listening and you're in yes. the Durant area. And yes. you can volunteer. You can volunteer. This is going to be your One your time. Sunday a month is all we That's ask. That's right. You know. That's all right. Hey, it takes, it does take a village mm-hmm. and a church. Yes. Um, I did too. I don't think we've, we've talked about it. We did at lunch, but you've got a support group that has recently um, begun that yes. is available. Yes. And yes. that Mighty is Moms. Mighty Mom. So, okay, give us the scoop on that. So, well, we just... Uh, you know, we've been meaning to start a mom's group for, <laughs> well, a for year. like a year, <laughs> but we had so many other projects that we were working on. And then, of course, all of our board members have other obligations, but we just kind of like decided last minute, like if we're, we can't just keep putting it off, mm-hmm. we're just going to do it. So yeah. I text Dee Dee and I, and it was like, I think it two was, days before, it was like something. two or three <laughs> days before. And I said, let's just do it this Saturday. And whoever shows up, shows yeah. up. Like it was only on social media for a few days and we had seven or eight moms mm-hmm. there. Yes, it was and, great. And um, we meet for coffee and we, we even say on the invitation, like, listen, it's Saturday morning, throw your hair in a bun and yoga pants yoga pants and a, or <laughs> a baseball or whatever. cap whatever don't, don't worry about makeup <laughs> nothing and just show up get some coffee and let's just chat and it's not formal in any way it's not like a meeting that's mm-hmm. led I mean we all introduce ourselves but then we just sit around and talk and mm-hmm. drink coffee and we'll have multiple conversations going on yeah. but <laughs> at, at the so same time I left there so f- like it felt so it good did. to meet other moms like me yes. and experience different things even though my child's older and you know their child might be younger it was just it was very I don't know I just enjoyed every second mm-hmm. of it well we can all just learn so much from each other mm. um you know like there's so many things you've gone through with Tad yes, I was thinking that. that that I can you can mm. you know help me through 
and and then I'll be able to turn around and help someone else mm-hmm. with you know who's just now getting a diagnosis Mm -hmm. and um it was just nice to sit around and talk with other moms and and make a joke that that like pertains to the (laughs) world that you live in and they all die laughing you don't get canceled yeah (laughs) because they're like oh yeah we know about that Mm -hmm. and so it was just it was really cool what is there do you have a particular time schedule set up yet or can they find that right now so they can always, what I suggest to anyone about finding out anything about okay anything that has to do with the <laughs> Owen Foundation is just following us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much everybody's on Facebook yeah. these days. So, um, But if you go to our page, there should be a little, um, like, three dots that you can touch to turn on notifications for okay. our page. Mm-hmm. So that when we do post a new event or an update, um, they'll that you'll get a notification for okay. it. Um, because I... Am, I did create an, an event this mm-hmm. time for the mom's event. Um, but right now we're doing them like every other Saturday. Okay. Um, so far, they've been at Opera House Coffee in Durant. We really love okay. the vibe there. It's really laid back yeah, and relaxed. Central. And yeah. yeah. And then, um, but I did have a mom request this last week or ask if we were going to have any in Sherman. And I was like, absolutely. I live in Sherman. Mm-hmm. So for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so that the ones from Sherman don't have to drive mm-hmm. to Durant. And if they want to, great. I mm-hmm. mean, it's not, you know, you can come to I- any of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we may start alternating mm-hmm. locations depending on how many how much interest we get yeah. but every time I've tried to do anything with moms uh, it's always been successful like without really trying mm-hmm. and I just think that just goes to people are desperate to prove for that. the point that yeah they're they the moms who are out there who are going through this they want that connection and mm-hmm. they want those those other moms that are going through like situations mm-hmm. and um, it's just even if you don't even if you don't you, you just can always Man, you can use always learn from somebody, and you can always use a friend, and it never fails. Somebody will be talking about something. One of the moms will mm-hmm. talk about something that that maybe I haven't experienced yet, but then two weeks later, and I'm like, oh, I remember mm-hmm. so and so talking about her kid doing this. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so it's just nice to hear all their stories and yeah. mm-hmm. save them. That's good. Um, we laughed about this earlier, but. <laughs> As we're on this topic, I mean, I think finding a community is probably one of the best things that you can do for mm-hmm. yourself. And mm-hmm. we talked about self-care. <laughs> Don't love that because I feel like it <laughs> seems like you're just going to sit around and get a manicure. And, and it, it is really so much. I'm, I love that. We love manicures. Yeah. Uh, but I'm it's down. so much more than that. Is what but it's saying. so much more than yeah. that. And um, community is a big part of that. Mm-hmm. What would you guys say um, that you do? Just practical day-to-day stuff. Honestly, this anything we say is going to be beneficial to yeah. a mom, whether you have a special needs child or not. But I feel like it's probably harder to steal a minute when when you're responsible for somebody that that yes. needs a little more supervision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what do you do that is nourishing to your soul, your mind, your body, um, any of those things? So I don't want to, we're, we're both like, oh, let me jump on self-care. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. Um, I mean, aside from, you know, I told you earlier, you know, like little things that you can do. Like I used to told you that whenever I was younger and we only had my older son who's not on the spectrum and life was easier and things moved faster. <laughs> I was very much a shower person, not a bath person. Mm-hmm. Um, I, because who had time to just sit sit around <laughs> in a right. bath? And, I, and so I said, now I take a bath almost every night because that's like my alone time mm-hmm. and that really does truly help there's something about mm-hmm. water there's something about I agree um uh, just just the peace that it mm-hmm. brings and there's certain music that I like to listen mm-hmm. to that's just very calming and relaxing um but I will say this I don't know if you've ever heard that saying and don't get me wrong because I do love 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 to travel and I love vacations me too. but there's a saying that uh create a life that you don't need a vacation mm-hmm. from and I and I feel like that is so important too as it relates to dealing and and raising your children on the autism spectrum you have to take all your daily tasks your routine and try to implement things that make those things as easy as yeah. possible. Because if you don't, you're constantly spinning your wheels and you're, you know, you're just, you're in this um, process of just frustration yeah. and things mm-hmm. that, you know, so you've just got to 
do whatever you can do to make your daily things that you do with your child as easy as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I had examples. I don't at the minute. I'll probably think of them <laughs> tonight think of them when later. I'm laying in <laughs> bed. Right. Um, but I think I think that just that that um, phrase that quote mm-hmm. has always stuck with me. Yeah. And and it, I read it again the other day, and I was like, oh, that's so true as it relates mm-hmm. to raising a child on the spectrum mm-hmm. because. If you don't, you'll lose your mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and well, just, also having those yeah, people sure. you can reach yeah. out to. Yeah. But giving yourself the grace yes. mm-hmm. to say, you oh, know what? Man. The dishes are going to stay dirty. Yep. Oh, man, uh, have I ever learned. I'm not going to wash my hair. I'm so hard on myself. Yes, yeah. I am yeah. too. And my husband's so hard on himself. And we've yes. even had those conversations where we have to look yeah. at each other and say. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's fine. Stop mm-hmm. being hard on, you know. Yeah. You, we That's both right. know that about ourselves. We're both very hard on ourselves, you know, academically. Mm-hmm in the workplace we've yes. always just been so hard on yep. on ourselves more hard than like you know anyone our boss then, yeah then you would be on anyone else or mm-hmm. whatever That's in those right. situations and we just have to say it's okay mm-hmm. you know and we have learned to relax so much mm-hmm. so much we've mm-hmm. had to yes yeah you, and find the humor in everything yes. that's important <laughs> oh my gosh we laugh a lot a um, lot I, I tend to, I haven't got to in the last couple of months because we just moved to a new home. So I'm trying to get, you know, unpacked. how that is. I'm going <laughs> to unpack right. for the rest of my life. But um, I, when Tad goes to homeschool to my mom and dad's um, from like 1030 to 130, I usually go to the gym because mm-hmm. that is how I get all yes. my anxiety and everything out there. And it seems to just refresh me to where I can I can be a good mom yes. again, you know, yeah. I, even mm-hmm. if I'm stressed, you know, mm-hmm. I don't want to be stressed around my son because like I had said earlier, he's very, he knows every emotion yeah. that I, he's got a, he just can tell, am I stressed? Am I sad? Yeah. Am I happy? And so I want to be the best person for him to be around. Mm-hmm. I want him to feel the love and the happiness. So I, it is very important for self care and for parents with special needs children to um, take care of themselves so they can you know, because I'm sure their kids are like, yes. yeah, they can yeah. feed off of your emotions. Sure. Normal children can as well. It's just important. You just need to take time yep. for yourself and give yourself that grace mm-hmm. and needs that it yeah. listen to your body yeah. too. <laughs> I feel like we could do a, a whole segment on, on self-care. Yeah. self-care. We'll just find self-care. another I term for well, it. Well, we could call it self-care. It is self-care. <laughs> it is just, it goes much but I feel like much we deeper really than a surface, and how important yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Dee Dee said, because you you can't take care of someone else. Just like in no. a plane, they you tell can. you put that's the right. oxygen mask on yourself. Yeah, that's exactly and right. And then the person next mm-hmm. to you. And we tend to we tend to take care of our kid. Yeah. And my, one doctor told me, you know, uh, I was telling him, I, you know, I only sleep this much because my child does mm-hmm. it, and the, I'm telling her all these things, and she was like, that is not normal. Like that's <laughs> chronic stress. Mm-hmm. You know, on and on, and but I thought it was normal because yeah. that's what I. You're so used to having to live under it. Every day that it's my, it can became my my normal mm-hmm. routine, yeah. and so we we have to acknowledge too that you know, that's not normal to not right. sleep to not right. right. So yeah, it's not good for any of us. No, so and mom guilt is so it's real. So oh, real. Man. Ugh, I yeah. hate it. It is. I've talked to two people in this last week mm-hmm. just randomly about it, and I, the pressure is is more mm-hmm. on a special needs parent it, it, it just is. It is it's and we're not i'm not nullifying it against anyone else but i feel like also too you might have an added layer of do i deserve to be joyful when my mm-hmm. child might be not joyful yeah. today mm-hmm. or well do, do my, i des- deserve anything comes in, am i doing enough for him yeah am i giving him am more, i advocating am I, enough am I doing am what I? he needs you know yeah. what more can i do yeah but physically what more can i do right. that's what i have to yes. kind of redirect myself yeah. like that what more can I do mm-hmm. I'm doing what I can now in the yeah. present so I've learned to take it just minute by mm-hmm. minute it's not day by day it's right. minute by minute so yeah. that's another way that I kind of self-cope yeah. I yeah. can't look too far ahead I'm not yeah. saying not to look ahead I'm just saying no but you, you cannot take on that's much. just a human you better mm-hmm. not do that no matter right, what your life right. circumstance mm-hmm. is because sure. we're just we're not guaranteed really anything mm-hmm. past today. That's and right. We're not meant to spend all of our time today worrying right. about the next yes. thing. Um, are there any 
books, any podcasts, any, um, we talked about a, net, a Netflix well, documentary, so, anything that you guys would say these would be helpful to people. I don't know where to start on specific a specific title for a book, and, mm-hmm. and Dee Dee may have one, but um, that's another thing that I've loved is that what we did in our office in Sherman, and if anyone's listening to this and they have a child on the spectrum, we have a library of, oh, I say library, a a pretty good selection of books about autism and raising children Mm -hmm. on the spectrum and parenting tips that anyone's welcome to come uh, use use Mm -hmm. and borrow for free. Just stop by the office and grab it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Take it home. Yes. Read it. It's yeah. good. And I need to add to your collection I found when I was moving. Oh, nice. All my books. Okay. You know, <laughs> yes, they were on. We didn't have a lot of internet either yes. back, for, you know, 14, 15, 14 years ago. So I read a lot of books um, to try to give me a little more insight on autism mm-hmm. and sensory processing. So. Yeah. yeah. I cannot tell you all thank you enough because I know I learned a lot. From lunch and here, <laughs> um, but go to Reba's, y'all. Yes, yes it was get so their bacon. Yeah, that's a form of self care. <laughs> they have you a gluten free bun. Gluten free bun. Some butters, <laughs> <laughs> a cheeseburger, and some good tea. That's right. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, thank y'all so much for sharing. Thank I know it's hard us. to um, to sometimes put yourself out there, but you guys know more than anyone how much that means to you when someone says, "Yeah, me too." Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Um, is there anything that we have not covered Probably. or said? I know. Probably. We can get together again. We can <laughs> go have like, dinner. Yes. I feel like right. we no, should. Yeah. Do you, um, I don't know, because. There's probably, I, I, we could talk about it all day. Oh, yeah. I feel like, and, and that's why it's so funny because we said we don't, it's like. Any, any other subject we would need to prepare. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh, we're going on a yes. Marcy's podcast. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, it's <laughs> about what, autism. It's very we, scary. We, we, got we got this. Right. <laughs> we got this. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Because because we can just, you bring up the subject and we've got something You've got to something say. You've got something to say, you know, to say so about it. I'm sure that That's there's funny. something that that we would want to talk about that, that we didn't mention, but maybe that means we'll get to come yeah, back. Yeah, we'll do it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What would you tell um, somebody watching um, that is in the throes of a hard season maybe they are waiting on a diagnosis or they're doing some of the red tape that goes along with getting um getting the care for their kids what would you say to the mom or the dad who is um who's in that spot if you just had to give them one if i could say one word even um Mm -hmm. and i don't mean to sound cheesy or anything but just breathe Mm -hmm. just take a breath because and it's hard and that and yeah. I'm not trying to No, it's it, not simple. It's That's not right. simple. And I'm not saying that breath is gonna be easily taken, mm-hmm. but just breathe because time goes on, you will get through this. Mm-hmm. You've got resources. That's why we started the Owen Foundation so people wouldn't feel mm-hmm. the and way you're not alone. And you're not alone. Um reach out to us. And I never mean, give up hope. Don't don't give up hope and, and those little milestones you know, your kid might be behind on them, but that doesn't mean that they're not on their way. Right, they're, and celebrate they're still those little celebrate. milestones. Celebrate mm-hmm. anything and don't care what anybody thinks. Be proud of your kid. Mm-hmm. Be so yeah. proud of your kid. And make sure your kid knows that you are, you are, proud, are proud of, of them. them because they feel it. And it makes you feel good. Stand up for your kid. Mm-hmm. Advocate for your kid. Mm-hmm. It's hard. It's not easy. But... In and the go, middle trust of, your mommy gut. And trust that your is, gut. That's so true. I'm absolutely, we were talking about that. Um, I've trusted my gut, and I've, we've been through some pretty hard times, and, I'm, and, and the Lord gave me that gut, mm-hmm. so I'm going to trust it. Right. And I, um, there's been multiple times where that has saved my child's life. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. trust your gut. Yeah. And when you're in meetings, IEP meetings, if you're not feeling it, trust your gut because you don't know you know your child better than anybody and IEP meetings that's a whole mm-hmm. other oh, thing that's yeah. a whole other segment <laughs> that is no that's true because those so. are very stressful I almost every IEP meeting I left not that it would I mean they were very helpful and beneficial but I left there crying and I don't know why it was the IEP meetings but that's one of my I don't I mean, you get told the whole time, like, Mm -hmm. what your child can't do, can't do, can't do, can't do. And I finally, I'm like, what, what can we do? Mm -hmm. You tell me what, it's not focused. Well, I know what he can do. Right, we know what he can't do. Yeah. And, and and Owen's just, he's new in, 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 this is his first year in school. He's in kindergarten. I know Mm -hmm. we're trying to wrap Mm -hmm. up, but 
um, I haven't, I've had amazing experiences yeah. with this school, but just so anyone who's listening who doesn't know what IEP is, it's mm-hmm. an indivi- individualized education plan mm-hmm. or program. Mm-hmm. And um, every child who's on the spectrum or who, who needs one can get one mm-hmm. through the school. Mm-hmm. They have that right. Um, and we're still learning. I'm still learning mm-hmm. about what all There's our rights are. There's mm-hmm. a lot to it. It's very important for your child to it, have one. It's very important for your child to have one and for you to advocate for them mm-hmm. in that meeting. Always be there. Always update it whenever mm-hmm. you feel like it needs updated. Um, and that's something else that the Owen Foundation can help with, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually have... Uh, people who serve on our board or myself I'm still learning but we've got contacts in the community we can go with you Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to go to your IEP meeting at your school Mm -hmm. if you would like for us to go Um, this is all free of charge you know we're we're a nonprofit organization we don't charge anything it's this is just what this is what we exist for Mm -hmm. to help make their lives easier but again like I said that's a whole yeah that's a whole (laughs) other segment no but that was a good point to bring (laughs) up because that is something Mm. you're gonna have to get good at and hey thanks a million to all the good teachers out there and the staff because special education the paperwork alone would drown you so if you've got a good if you've got a good one um Mm -hmm. stick with that's don't move that's right and um just a and give them grace because yeah. they <laughs> teamwork they makes the dream work. I'm telling they you, they need it like we need it. Too, yes, right? they need it. And 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 me, I wasn't saying, but I don't, oh no, I, I no. wasn't saying anything it's about. It's just a hard. It's thing. just a hard. That was that's one of the hard things for me to do for Tad is to do the IEP part. Mm-hmm. And I don't. Oh, yeah. I could never tell you why, but it was just. I it was know. a reminder, it probably, just, of like I'm not sure why those things I mean, that you. They were very. Mm-hmm. Yeah nice and helpful and accommodating but I left there not because of them but just because of the situation yeah. like I don't know mm-hmm. it always hit me hard yeah. I don't yeah. know yeah as a t- I've taught for a while and I can remember those and I felt the I same. mean as a teacher you're just like I want to do everything I can mm-hmm. do but also it's hard. I know as a parent and all honestly you don't know but you're you can empathize mm-hmm. with I can't imagine what you're trying to do but it kind of puts everything right in front of you yeah. and you kind of can't hide from maybe yeah. so mm. maybe that was it yeah, uh, absolutely but like you said i'll be happy to or brina and i yeah. are both yes, be happy no, to attend good. an ip meeting with you and love on you afterwards that's if right. you need it <laughs> go get coffee <laughs> that's right <laughs> treats and balls because i know <laughs> that's right okay so the owenfoundation.org yes mm-hmm. you can go there pretty much to find all of this mm-hmm. i know brina mm-hmm. is on facebook mm-hmm. are you dd mm-hmm. as I'm well are you on under dd or deidre Gallegos. okay mm-hmm. great go find them they the do owen post. foundation is too and we'll post oh yeah yeah, yeah. on the owen foundation mm-hmm. usually yes. yep on the turn page. your notifications on for yes. our facebook page yeah. because that way you'll get invites and yep a notification when we have an event or anything all the new things. coming up all the things that is good also, if you would like to volunteer or you have lots of money in your checkbook. Oh, my goodness, please. People do. <laughs> and they, some people do. Um, but it is a 501c3. So it is a yep. legitimate tax write offable mm-hmm. um, place to donate. Yes. Also, you might just, sometimes we don't think about it, but just sharing that information on your own social media. Absolutely. Because we don't, yeah. if, if somebody else doesn't know, it, this is a fantastic And you can resource. actually go to the owenfoundation.org and donate there. We can Great. take payment on our website. It's a secure um, portal, and you can submit your, you could do a monthly pledge, yeah. or you can just do a one-time donation. That's great. Mm-hmm. We take anything. Yes. Yeah. We Venmo. don't, but they do. Venmo. Venmo. Right. Yeah, we do. Have, the Owen Foundation does That's have right. a Venmo, too, oh, yes, so it's it very, we make it very easy so easy for you to give. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. Well, hey, thanks, y'all, again. Thank you, Thank for, you for having sharing us. your stories, and um, look forward to seeing what comes up in the future and all the different things that um, are going to be available to help people. Yep. Awesome. Well, thanks for tuning in to Marcy in the Middle, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, and hit subscribe to keep up with all future episodes. We'd also love for you to leave us a five-star review. That wraps it up for today's Marcy in the Middle. And remember, whatever you're in the middle of, you're not alone. We'll see you next time.